Hello, everyone. I'm Allison Baksh, Marketing Manager at Genome Web, and I'll be your moderator today. The title of today's session is Tools and Workflows Optimized for Processing Single Cell Data. This e-case study will start with a brief presentation, and we will follow up with a Q&A discussion with our panelists. Our panelists today are Manisha Ray, Scientific Program Manager at Seven Bridges, and Nemanja Vuvkik, Bioinformatics Analyst at Seven Bridges. Special thanks to our sponsor, Seven Bridges, for making this presentation possible. Manisha, please go ahead with your presentation. Hi, I'm Manisha Ray. I'm a Program Manager at Seven Bridges for our Cancer Focus platform. And we're very excited to tell you about some new tools that we've developed for working with single cell data on the Seven Bridges platforms. A little bit of background on Seven Bridges. Um, Seven Bridges has been around for over 10 years, and we are um, a leader in making bioinformatics easier for scientists from all ends of the spectrum. Whether you're a basic researcher trying to figure out data analysis in your individual lab, or whether you're a bioinformatics professional at a biopharma company working on clinical trials, we have tools and resources in our cloud-based platforms to make it easier for you to do the data analysis you need. So um, our industry-leading best practices in terms of security, tools, data access, and ability to collaborate around the world make it much easier for data analysis to happen in the cloud um, using the Seven Bridges platforms. One area in particular where cloud computing can be um, really beneficial to the data analysis is specifically working with single cell data. So um, single cell as a field has exploded in recent years. Um, you can see from this graph here from about approximately 10 years ago, doing one cell via single cell transcriptomics was very exciting. But today, we can do thousands and millions of cells in a single experiment. And when every individual cell is a whole transcriptome or a whole genome, the size and complexity of these data sets can be huge. And when the size and complexity of data sets is so large, it can be really difficult to physically access the data to do your data analysis. Um, downloading the data can take a very long time. It can be very challenging. And once you have access to the data, trying to get the computational power to do things like transcriptome-based analyses on so many cells can be really, really limiting and can make it difficult for the average researcher to do this type of work. And that's where cloud computing and the capabilities of the submerged platforms can really help. By keeping the data in the cloud, anyone with an internet connection can access it. And um, that means all of the tools and resources can be in a centralized place, and any collaborator can be using the same tool to analyze the same data anywhere in the world. So um, this type of research is really amenable to cloud computing and the benefits of the platforms in that um, by having the data analysis kind of centralized in the, locale, in the cloud, anybody can do this type of, of research. Why has this research become so popular in recent years? Well, really, it's because um, when you look at cells individually, you can have a much better sense of what's going on in the whole picture. The emergent properties that come out from the heterogeneity presence in very, very complex tissues can often be responsible for the interesting biology that your research is focused on. For example, in cancer development, it's usually one individual cell that's accumulated a certain set of mutations that goes on and cause cancer. Or in developmental biology, as every cell divides, um, cells go on to have different fates. And without looking things at the single cell level, it can be very difficult to understand the developmental trajectory. So by the technology allowing us to now look at things at the single cell level, amazing new insights in biology can be made in all different fields. So um, now that we know why it's so important to do single cell research, it's still remaining challenging to, um, to actually access and analyze the data. Um, some of the challenges include, as I mentioned earlier, that the data sets are large and complex, which makes accessing them a challenge. And that's where moving things to the cloud can really address that challenge. Additionally, the data itself is quite sparse. Um, 
So every individual cell doesn't actually contain that much data. So traditional methods of doing, for example, RNA-seq analysis don't quite work on single cell data sets. And um, as new methods to analyze this data has developed, there's been a huge explosion in the number of tools and workflows and different methods to look at single cell data, as you can see on the graph on the right here. And consensus has not yet been established for many of these tools. So it's been really challenging for a researcher to know which of these many tools is useful. So um, today we will present several of the tools that we have put on these seven bridge platforms to do these types of single cell analyses. And uh, one of the other benefits of having them on our platform is that we help out with that decision as well. Um, the, we provide some benchmarking of the tools so you can see how they perform and some descriptions of them so you can see what it would best be used for. So today we're going to present um, a suite of tools that we have to do single cell analysis on the platforms and then a case study specifically of using um, several of the tools to do trajectory analysis. Just a little background on how, our, how we categorize the different methods to do um, analysis on our platform. So tools are a single method for analysis. So doing, doing one step of an overall pipeline. A workflow is a series of tools that can be connected together into a larger pipeline. So for example, one of the tools we we'll mentioned today um, has four or five different tools in it that are connected together into what we call a workflow. And then um, we also have what we call interactive analyses that run on our data cruncher feature. And this allows you to take higher level analyses and process them to do visualizations or other more complicated um, types of biological focus analyses, such as trajectory analysis, which we'll talk about in the next few slides. And with our data cruncher feature, you can use Jupyter notebooks or our markdown notebooks to, to do these higher level analyses. And you can, um, we'll go through some of the packages we have on the platform today, but for all of these categories, you can also bring in your own tools, workflows, and packages. I should mention that um, everything on the platform is wrapped in Chrome workflow language, which enables um, workflow portability and enables them to run on our platform as it would run in any other environment. So the tools that we have available for single cell analysis for full length um, single cell data, we have the SmartSeq2 workflow, the tracer tool, and the mixer tool. Um, SmartSeq2 is designed to go from the raw data to the gene counts, whereas Tracer and Mixer are used to look at um, T cell and B cell receptors. We also have a whole set of tools to similarly go from the raw data to gene counts for uh, end counting UMI based methods. So for that we have um, the Caliso bus tools, the Cell Ranger toolkit, which is a series of five separate tools, and we have um, extensions of the Star Aligner called Star Solo and Salmon 11. We also have um, the Zoomy tool. Um, and then once you have gotten to your gene counts, we have a series of interactive analyses that are in our markdown notebook to do higher level analyses, including the Harmony tool for correction of batch effects, the Surat set of tools for doing clustering and detection of marker genes, and the Monocle tool for doing trajectory analysis which we'll talk about more in the next few slides. So here we're showing um, <clears throat> the different categories of tools we have present on the platform. First we have alignment-based tools, which are um, based essentially on star aligner, and these are splice-aware aligners that will take into account um, isoforms and information like that. And these include the Cell Ranger tools, the Zoomy tools, and Star Solo. We also have pseudo alignment based tools, which are um, extensions of Calisto and Salmon that have a single step alignment and quantum quantification. And these can be optimized a little bit more for single cell research. And in the middle here, we have the different methods of producing single cell data that um, each tool can be used for. So here you can see which tools can be helpful for different types of single cell data um, by the arrows here. Um, cell Ranger tools, obviously very useful with a 10x platform. 
um, the Zoomy tool and the Callisto tools can be used essentially with any UMI-based method. And um, the dotted lines are present for tools that have not been tested on data from these workloads, but in theory should work for any, any data produced in this way. So now we'll go into a little bit more detail about a specific set of tools that we've used to do some trajectory analysis. Thank you, Manisha. So on the following slides, we would like to present the application of tools for single cell analysis that is conducted on endothelial tumor cells isolated from mice with melanoma. Uh, to demonstrate the performance of the tools for processing full-length protocols and packages for trajectory inference, uh, we purchased a data set available on human cell upload data portal. Uh, this data set comes from a study on tumor development in mice conducted in Python files. The authors perform single cell RNA seq analysis to analyze changes in stromal cells at different stages of tumor development. Uh, they were tracking these changes in mice to whom they injected melanoma cells, where they collected samples after 5, 8, and 11 days after injection. The main focus of the analysis was related to changes in T cells and fibroblasts. Therefore, our idea was to expand this analysis to additional cell types by investigating changes in endothelial tumor cells. The authors used MARCIC2 full-length protocol to produce raw sequencing reads. Reads in FASTQ format are available on data portal of the human cell atlas, which we recently made available on a cancer genomics cloud platform as well. So to process FASTQ files, we created an implementation of SmartSeq2 workload in common workload language and optimized it to be executed on seven previous cloud infrastructure. The workload uses HiSet2 tool for the alignment and RSEN tool in the quantification step. We processed a subset of endothelial tumor cells, which had 1,092 paired and positive files. Uh, and total processing time on Cancer Genomics Cloud Platform was uh, 49 minutes, running on 10 parallel AWS instances, each having 36 GPUs and 72 gigabytes of RAM, with the total price of the analysis uh, being $5.5. After processing raw sequence read and producing count matrices, we perform trajectory inference analysis using Monocle R package. Uh, the package Monocle provides methods for ordering single cells and placing them along the trajectory that corresponds to a biological process such as cell differentiation. In the first step of the analysis, Monocle employs a differential expression test. After that, Monocle performs dimensionality reduction followed by the construction of a minimum spanning tree. In the final step, Monocle algorithm finds the longest path to the next minimum spanning tree, corresponding to the longest sequence of transcriptionally similar cells. On the top right plot, we show a trajectory along which Monocle placed individual cells. Selecting the differentially expressed genes at the beginning of the analysis, we enforce this trajectory to be in alignment with changes in endothelial cells over time. Now that we calculated trajectory, the additional step in the analysis could be the identification of genes that change expression along the trajectory. On the, on the bottom right plot, you can see three genes coding for transcriptional cofactors and changes in their activity over time. You may notice that these genes were not active in early stages of tumor development, but their activity increased in later stages. This approach could be used for the identification of genes as potential biomarkers in indicating progression of tumor through different stages of development. Uh, now I will turn back to Alison so we can proceed uh, the questions. Great, thank you Manisha and Nemanja for the excellent presentation. We will now move over to some questions. Our first one is, have you compared the performance of the different tools for processing TAG or UMI-based single cell data?
Uh, yes, we did uh, the comparison, and uh, the results of uh, after comparing performances indicate that pseudo alignment based tools are much faster and require far less computational resources than tools based on car aligner when processing 10x uh, single cell data set. Uh, pseudo alignment based tools give accurate results. And in some, in some segments, I'll perform star based tools, which we have witnessed on multiple steps when making this comparison. But uh, nevertheless, we advise that single cell ranger software be used for 10 data since it is optimized and it is extensively tested and validated. Um, also, single cell, uh, cell ranger software provides the ability to perform clustering and detection of marker genes. Uh, without the use of additional methods for downstream analysis like our package service. And as a conclusion, we might say that pseudo alignment based tools are a good alternative to accelerator for processing 10x data and even better than uh, other star based tools like uh, Zoom. Okay, next question. All right, great. Our next question is. How can single cell tools like these help to translate research from the lab to the clinic? So earlier we mentioned the human cell upload project. And within that project, single cell analysis is extensively used to characterize every cell type with a focus on healthy individuals. Uh, this information is critical to understanding how disease states differ from healthy tissues. Uh, one example would be recent findings that majority of CFTR transcripts in one are coming, coming from a novel cell type that was not identified before. CFTR gene, when mutated, is the main cause of the disease called cystic fibrosis. But knowing which cell populations are most involved in expressing disease-related genes could help scientists uh, create a targeted therapy approaches. Uh, another application of single cell sequencing would be to monitor disease progression and response to therapy, which is highly utilized in the area of cancer research. Uh, you can perform trajectory inference to track down which clones or cells are eliminated by chemotherapy and which ones persist or become resistant over time. In that way, uh, single cell transcriptomics gives potential for matching patients to the right cancer treatment. Additionally, how well a drug works also depends on what is happening in the surrounding tissues. Single cell analysis of tumor environments provides a complete picture of disease progression in patients' response to treatment. And we show the segment of such analysis in our presentation today. Uh, all of these and many other questions can be answered using single cell transcriptomics in combination with bioinformatic tools we presented today. And cloud-oriented infrastructures like Seven Bridges platform would uh, help manage increasing sizes of single cell data sets and provide environments to conduct reproducible bioinformatic analysis. Okay. Great. The next question is, what's the difference between a pseudo aligner and a regular aligner, and which is better for analyzing single cell data? Okay, so we mentioned that pseudo aligners require much less computational resources and they are much faster than regular aligners. And that is because they do not perform classical rate mapping to the reference, but they are just determining the transcript the read originated from and performing the quantification at the same time. On the other hand, uh, classical aligners will have much better mapping rate and have the potential to identify novel uh, transcript isoforms and they are better in uh, detecting the uh, single mutated variants. Uh, they provide significant advantages when using full length single cell protocols, which usually have a larger number of sequencing reads per cell than UMI based protocols. Our benchmarking results indicate that using classical aligners on UMI protocols, on UMI protocols such as 10X, uh, does not provide significant advantage, and that pseudo aligners could be even better in some segments for these protocols. Uh, and these protocols are usually used for the analysis of the cellular heterogeneity and uh, identification of marker genes. Okay. 
Great. Thank you to both our presenters and to our sponsor, Seven Bridges, for making this presentation possible.